the uh, concert house. The opera. I think I did walk past it then. Okay. I think oh, the uh, room is really full, Inez. Yes. <laughs> I know. We can see yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I know. Uh, okay, we can start, I think. So let's go. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. This is the ITF uh, role meeting. Uh, okay, uh, people, uh, participants, make sure that uh, you're using Micheco and uh, that your audio video is off unless you're presenting. So we are going to delegate the handle of the slides to you when you need to present. Uh, make sure of the resources, uh, they are outlined. Mm -hmm. Okay. Dominic, yep, I do this part. So, um, this is an ITF meeting, and as such, uh, you need to be aware of the note wells, uh, um, notably of the IPR uh, policies. If you know of, of any IP um, uh, pertaining to any of the topics being discussed, be it yours or somebody else's, you know, need to either mention it or not talk about the topic. And also, I want to mention the harassment topic. Uh, so with uh, BCP25, we expect this meeting to be a professional meeting where everybody is treated with respect. And so if you feel anything is going on that is not appropriate, you have uh, contact the Ombuds team, which you can reach confidentially. And we really want this uh, work, this meeting, this workplace to be uh, professional. Thank you, uh, Dominic. So uh, who could volunteer to help us with the notes? There are some volunteers. I see five people online. Do we have volunteer? I see Pascal trying to talk. Yes. Is that to say yes? Yes, it's to say yes. For some reason, it takes time for my mic to work. It might work. Okay, I will, I will contribute. Good. Thank you, Pascal. Great. Any, any, so anybody else? Is, Maybe a second one, especially when uh, Pascal is talking. Uh, I'll I'll take notes when he's talking. Great, thank you, Michael. Thank you very much. Great. Uh, okay, about the agenda, we're going to have first the working group status by Dominic and myself. Then uh, Pascal will provide us the uh, updates in DAO projection. Then Michael uh, will uh, discuss the open issues of enrollment priority. And then Pascal uh, will provide that update in the six law work about multicast registration that uh, affect Ripple. And then five minutes for open floor. Do you have some comments on the agenda? Objections? Okay, thank you. We proceed. So this is our draft status. Um, so we got, uh, thank you Alvaro for the update in the NSA extension. So now the others uh, need to replay and address the open issues. Then for our delivery ripple, it's, uh, this, is our, this document has open issues and we're going to discuss next on this. Um, uh, DAO projections are going to be presented today and it's uh, kind of uh, all the issues, uh, open issues are addresses. Now it's kind of ready for last call. 
And then the enrollment priority is going to be presented today, and mainly we want to discuss the open issues. Uh, MOPEX capabilities uh, need the, it's a work in progress, need to put attention on that. And the uh, role story acknowledged, probably we will need to drive a working group adoption for it. And um, we just got the new work adopted, Conrad work, about the fast border router crash detection. Uh, okay, so for milestones, um, well, we have, uh, we propose changes. I don't know if Dominique, you want to take lead on this? Okay. Well, the milestones haven't been updated in a while and so they are lagging by maybe a year or two. So it's about time to refresh those. Um, so here are the milestones that were defined uh, so far and um, we're proposing new dates. Uh, so we've put years but not months so um, can we have an estimate for those and so that we can refresh the milestones so let's go through them uh DAO projection um i think this can be 72 asg within this year um pascal April, May, May. Yep. Yeah. any idea pascal or maybe alvaro based on your own uh queue when do you think this would be reasonable? Uh, hi, Albert with an eroding ID. Um, don't uh, progress the work based on what the working group can do. Uh, my, my queue, yes, is very deep right now and I'm running behind. Um, but don't Look at that, you know, just, you know, progress the work as, as the worker needs to progress it. And um, I'm, I'm working on finding a way to drain the queue a little bit faster. Uh, there were some documents, especially last year, that were bigger documents, not from this working group, but um, that I had to, you know, process and, and they, um, you know, cost some blocking there. So, you know, process as you normally would, and I'll um, try and take care of this uh, faster. Okay, thank you. Uh, if you were asking for the DAO projection, yes. Um, my take is uh, we had more than one very deep review recently, and you will see in my updates. But uh, yeah, I, I think we are we are we have reached the quality of uh, Wargo Pascal. So I would be happy when you start it. And and my status was uh, Remus Aris was supposed to give one last review before World Group Festival, but since we got one for, from Lee, one from Dallas, um, I think Remus Harris review can, can be one of those for last call, as opposed to before last call. So May, to, uh, May is fine, May? Uh, it might be a bit earlier. Yeah, de definitely. Even earlier, I mean, if you start the work group last call now, I mean, as soon as you know the current last calls are completed, um, you may start this one and then well, it's, it's a matter of a month or two max. Again, this is submission to ASG, so I guess this is after ID review, is that correct? Uh, no. Uh... Uh, after working group last call, I think when when, when we, we press the button, uh, okay. No. Okay, let's it may... let's shoot it for me. Mm -hmm. It's a projection, as the name says. No projection. <laughs> and uh, the government priority uh, is there are some open issues, maybe June or September. What do you think, Michael? Um, I'm just looking and I'm thinking we, we should fix the title. <laughs> um, maybe a title is wrong, but um, uh, yeah, no, I, I actually think we really could push the button before uh, at, at around the next ITF. I think so. I think, I mean, it's, it got to maturity point and then we said, oops. So uh, I think we just need to resolve uh, the discussion as to what we need to do. And we'll do that probably maybe today even. Um, it's already had so a few reviews. So I think so. 
I, I think certainly by the end of the summer, but I think even earlier, maybe the beginning of the summer. Mm. August is fine or September? Yeah, okay. Okay, September. And then uh, well, Mopex and capability that we have to there do uh, two milestones because there are two documents. So maybe we aim for November. I, I I think that's maybe reasonable, but that's good. It's going to take us. Uh, I think we're going to need some some uh, uh, some interim meetings to to get to that because I think there's still a lot of of open questions uh, that there and 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 it um, yeah it would be great to have some implementations uh, to do something like this, our team. Okay. Yes, so probably we we'll have an internet in two months for that. Will you implement MOPEX and CAPEX? No, okay. Uh, thank you for the comment. And then, the well, Conrad's work just started, so it, it will, we will push for next year. Um, then the, these modifications, uh, Dominic, or... Uh, yes, um, yeah, I wrote 2023, so I stand by it. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, yes. Okay, for Jan model from MPL, uh, do you want to work on this topic? I mean, this it's is it's anybody still um, working on that. Okay, yes. And then, so, um, so the question is, do we want to drop the milestone? Or is anybody willing to work on it, to resurrect it? This is the Yang model? Yes. For Mipo. It's something we already adopted. Uh, no, uh, it was, uh, it's ex by a long time ago, it was written by Peter. Right, but it was adopted by the working group and it's part of the milestone, so what do we do? Yeah. I, I don't think we're gonna finish it. Okay, we can mm -hmm, we can confirm in the mailing list. Yes. Okay. Some of the comments that we got for Audi Ripple that they, they need as well, the YAN model for that was a request from the area director, but it's other topic, but it's related with young. So maybe at some point we need to consider this for the management part. Right. Uh, Alvaro, uh, can we remove milestones? What's the process for that? Do we need to get approval? Yeah, hi, Alvaro Rathana Rodney. Yes, so the... Um, the part of the request process is the charter, right? We need to change the charter. Um, to change the milestones, uh, you know, you change them, you add, delete, whatever. I'm going to get an email to to approve, but in, in general, you know, this is um, a big part of this is your decision. Now, as you know, said, um, the ASG is paying special attention to manageability. And the normal question comes up with every draft. So where's the Yang model for this? How are we going to manage this network? Um, you know, one thing that, that you know, we probably, or, or you need to discuss in the working group is, you know, how do these networks get managed? You know, is Yang the appropriate way to do it? Are there other tools? Um, you know, I, I, I don't know, because if we need, um, work to be done, you know, we need to work, work to be done because otherwise the solutions wouldn't be complete. Uh, ideally you would find people in the working group that are interested. Um, so maybe that's the type of conversation that we need to have because not all, uh, say, IoT-related deployments are going to have the same type of manageability that uh, other networks or other types of networks are going to have. So if Yang makes sense, sure, at some point we need to do it. If it doesn't make sense, um, then you know, maybe not. Uh, so we can then negotiate that when we recharter at some point. So we don't we don't have a, a work item right now for, as a Yang model for ripple okay this is a yang model for mipple 
Correct. All right. And I would say that that there's close to zero deployment of MIPL today. Um, some of the lighting and building people were very enthusiastic about it. And um, I don't know if they're still enthusiastic about it. Maybe that, that mm -hmm. may be one of the questions. We don't like why I'm saying I don't think we'll complete it because I don't think the people that even mm -hmm. have a MIPL are are participating anymore. And I don't think I can write a management protocol for a protocol I haven't implemented, right? So, um, uh, I think, yeah, actually, the chat didn't mention the Ripple and Mipple management data model for those. It mentioned in the in the work, it is in the charter. But yeah, probably uh, there is people that uh, have some other priorities. Pascal, do you want to? Say something. Pascal, you're in the queue. We can't hear you. Hello? Yes. Now yeah. we have. Yes, my mic, when I disconnect, it takes an hour to reconnect. I, I don't know why. Anyway, uh, Meeple is effectively used by some. So, uh, that I like it that much. Now, Wi-Fi is not using Wi-Fi, so yes, I'm sure we find I guess somebody who is interested in working on a network that is young for Ripple. Uh, how can we expect a young model? And so so we, we can keep it in a charter, but there's no work item, right? I have trouble hearing you, so is there, can you restate slowly or go to the notes and fix what I just typed? I heard you saying Wyson used Mipple, but now, and I lost the rest of it. Let me switch device because the. I, can you hear me better with this device? I just switched my. Yeah, this is better. Okay, so, so I was saying Mipple is being used by Wyson, uh, but uh, Wyson is not using Yang. And until we have a, an actual deployment that uses uh, Ripple and my, or Ripple and decides to work with Yang, I don't see that we will get resources to develop the Yang model. And what? Keeping the charter is okay, but the work item is stored. It will be stored for a while. Uh, what the Wyson is using for management, MPL? Well, they, they have their own pro based management. Okay. Thank you. It's, it's documented within the Wyson standard, but it's not it's not a ETF. It, it's a user score. Mm -hmm. Okay, we will take uh, the confirmation in the mailing list of this removal of this. Uh, work. Thank you. Like I say, um, we necessarily have to remove it from the charter, because maybe one day somebody will use Young for managing a report network. So let's have the charter item. But we are not working on it. It's a fact. Okay. Thank you. About the next topic, uh, South Road Multicast for Ripple. Do we have some comments on it, Pascal or Karsten? Yes, I, uh, I have two comments. Uh, the first one is uh, Benjamin, you know, is stepping out and he's, he's doing all his reviews. And if you, if you watch uh, his review, he, he just abstained. But if you look inside the review, you will see why he abstained. And he's basically telling us that the work group has not done the full work. Uh, the quality of the document was not good enough when it reached ESG. That's what Ben is telling us. I, I'm paraphrasing, but please look at his words. Um, and I was asked to do a review on version 13. I did. I published it. Um, I used gentle words, but. No, sorry, I'm, we are not talking about the, how they be rebuilt. It's source. Uh, the, Oh, I'm sorry, source not not yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I chose a source not uh, report. Isn't oh. slide nine? Yeah, sorry. 
Oh and no, no, no progress on that. We just discussed it with Karsten this morning because we, because of the other draft, the the one on the storing a uh, non-storing mode multicast, which which I will be discussing. Uh, so he said, did somebody work on how that interact with Ccast? But uh, that's the only news in years, and so I don't know that anybody's working on Ccast. So is there any intention to progress it, or does it mean it's? The only thing I know is probably I look at it again with Casper to see how it integrates with the uh, multicast registration work and the mock file. But uh, I have no, no idea that there will be an intersection. So I don't know anybody's working on it for years. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And then one. Well, charter working group or close next year as well okay then uh, okay we are going to be fast here there are open issues to be discussed today about uh um, enrollment priority then we have additional uh, open items for obs ripple observations and uh, mock pets and finally, well, as uh, Pascal was stating, do we have a new version of how they ripple, but still is uh, uh, with the open issues. Uh, there are tickets created for the reviews that we got and for the discuss and uh, abstain of Ben comments. Um, but yes, now the work, the this uh, document have changed the mode of operation to four. Uh, I don't think uh, there is uh, some authors online. I don't think I so. Don't. Uh, but uh, no. uh, okay, but um, um, this uh, work is uh, the, some of the authors want to finish this work. Uh, but uh, we would like to know if uh, there is interest in the working group to work in this topic. There is one implementation from 2016, but it was not updated with the last modifications. So basically, we would like to know what do you think if you want to work on this topic? Yes, Pascal? Well, I have spent quite some time on, on this. I did I just do three reviews already. Uh, so yes, we did fail, we did uh, the work has been very, very slow. And mm -hmm. Moment is very unclear that what is specified works. I mean, from my command and from Ben's command, it's very, very unclear that it works at all as described. So we cannot push the button for publication request at this time, not at all. And whether there are enough hands to work on it, I, I, I could do one more review in the future, no worries. But I will not contribute. And so we need active contributor who really implement and um, look at my commands. It's not even clear it works. Okay, thank you very much, Pascal. Uh, so yes, indeed, this document they need to be addressed uh, all the open issues before further uh, further uh, publishing process. Uh, what do you think, Alvaro? It's not. It's not just saying uh, yes or no on the question, right? It's really describe the mechanism because it's empty and it's as, as the high level description doesn't seem to work. So it goes deeper than just saying yes or no to the question. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, Alvaro Tanaroni. So, um, so this document already went through working group last call and IETF last call and IESG evaluation and I read it and everything else. And uh, yes, um, you know, there are a number of topics that uh, Ben brought up. Uh, he ended up staining. Abstain usually means you know, there's, there's so much work that needs to be done, but I'm not, um, I don't have time. I'm not willing to engage on that. Uh, ben, of course, is stepping down today as security AD, so you know, he doesn't have any more uh, cycles to, to work on this. Um, and, and Pascal's recent review uh, really concerned me because, um, again, you know, this document left the working group um, a year ago or so. Um, we are at a point where 
um, I could actually approve the document. There's enough positions to, to move it forward, but there are enough holes and things that need to be fixed that, that that's definitely not the right thing. Um, the right thing to me seems to be to return the document to the working group, uh, which is where I think the, the question from Ines comes of, of is there interest in the working group to work on this topic? Uh, because if there isn't, then of course we're almost sentencing the document to death, right? Because we're returning it. If the working group is not gonna work on it, then it's probably not gonna go anywhere. Um, I, I hate to see work that people have done um, you know, sort of go to waste. But if that is the state of where we are with the document and with the interest of the working group, then, you know, that's what sometimes happens, right? If there's no interest, uh, there's no interest. So, so what I think I need to do is return the document to the working group. And uh, if or as you find time to an interest to work on it, then you, you can, right? And, and if it ever comes back to uh, me and the AESG, then we'll you know, do the processing uh, at that point. But yeah, there's enough issues outstanding and open right now and enough concerns that, that I, I can't um, you know, push the document forward. Thank you very much, Alvaro. Yeah, uh, we agree with you. So having the document to the working group back so we can address all the issues is the, uh, is the way, is the right way to proceed. So thank you very much. Okay. Uh, okay, I pass the deck to Pascal. Projection. Sure. Pascal? Ah. Hello. I pass the control to you from yes. the slides. Okay. Uh, if you could tell me, okay. <clears throat> okay, so this is uh, about uh, the, the DAO projection. Just for those who are new to the topic, um, the, the main ripple standard, there are 6550, uh, I'm sorry, um, is a classical quote unquote distance vector with uh, protocol with some uh, specific adaptation for IoT in particular, it's uh, anisotropic, meaning that it has a sense of direction in its operation. Um, but it's, it's a distance vector family. Now, th there are extreme uh, use cases where it's probably not what you want. And at one extreme, uh, we can see uh, Ripple AODV play, that's the pure MANA, a uh, very reactive, changing environment where you really want to establish only the routes that you care to use. So that's a very extreme use case. The other extreme use case uh, is when you you want a, a, a much better, tighter control, like the type of traffic engineering situation. Um, and this is where the, the DAO projection plays. So you can see it as a uh, SDN uh, variation of Ripple whereas AODV would be a reactive protocol adaptation of Ripple. All of them play with the same messaging, the same basic structures, but they, they operate reactively for AODV and uh, using um, SDN type controller based routing uh, for the projection. So that's basically how I would position it. Now I built this slide for the sake of positioning the different things that we manipulate with this document um, and how it, it builds on, on what Ripple did in the past. So first thing, there are two kinds of, of routes that DAO projection can install inside the network. What The first type is what I would call a segment and it's a serial link, it's a serial uh, set of hops. And that's what happens with a project DAO, which is sent by the root to forwarding node G, which is one of those black nodes on the top. And the, the PDAO will follow the path on the reverse direction of the packet, which is true for any DAO. And uh, the, the PDAO contains that path, so it will basically say A to F to G, it is sent to G, it goes all the way back this path, and A, which is the ingress, will send the PDAO back 
to the root. And with this, we have built a serial segment. That's what we call a segment. But uh, now, one more question, sorry. Uh, segment one should have the ingress included or not necessarily? Seg segments as an ingress and an egress. Uh, I, I should, I could have written uh, that A is the ingress of that particular segment. Oh, okay. Uh, but it's it's a, it's our naming, right? I mean, because a segment by itself, if it's if it has a, a track ID for itself, it's already a track, but it's just a serial path. Um, normally, it's just it's more of a component of a larger structure, and that larger structure is what we call a track. And we build a track by putting together a number of track legs, and in this. In this drawing, I have three track legs. One that goes from egress, they, are, they all go from egress to egress, right? Ingress to egress. It's, it's a path that you establish with a non-storing PDAR. And it, it, pro, it provides a uh, loose uh, source route path between ingress and egress. And you can see the first uh, leg is from I to A, A to F, F to G, G to E. And, and through that, you can reach the target TIs. So that's the upper uh, leg. Then you have a middle leg, which goes from I to A, A to B, B to E, and then you can reach the targets again. Uh, what's interesting in this second leg is the path between A and B is actually another truck. So it's, it is itself a truck for which A is ingress and B is egress. Okay, so, so A has to re-encapsulate, if you like. See, that's a tunnel. Uh, but it's, it's a more complex tunnel because, for instance, the track that you see between the I and E has three legs in it. <coughs> and the last leg is I to B to E. Oh, by the way, um, I say I to B to E. I should, I should have said I to A to E before, but it was just to differentiate that I was going uh, via the top. So basically, when you when you establish a non-storing loose path, you just provide what we call the relay this picture, which are the nodes uh, which are which appear in the source route. So the source route says, for instance, to go I to A to E, there is a PDAO, one of those gray PDAO on the left, which is sent by the route to ingress I and the main route, the route of the main TODAC. And it says source route path is uh, I to A to E. And A will have a segment to go to E that will allow it to uh, forward towards E, but the source route path will just say A to E. And that will in fact imply that you go through the segment, which is F, G, E. Okay, so a track leg is a loose source route serial path. Between the loose hubs, you get segments. And the track is the aggregation of multiple of those legs. Each leg go from ingress to egress. So uh, th this is what I wanted to illustrate in this uh, drawing. So you see the targets that you can reach are those green TIs on the right, so the set of T1, T2, Tn. The legs, there are three of them, I, A, E, which, which is advertised as one non-storing mode DAO with the targets Ti. Second leg is uh, L2, which goes from I, B, E, and that's the lower leg. Again, it's a source route path going to TI. And the last leg is the one that goes across I, A, B, E, and that one actually re-encapsulates in another track between A and B. Thank yeah, you. I, and I then... hope we... yeah? so, sorry, thank you. Uh, so from subtracts, we can have segments and legs as well, right? Well, we, we can decide our wording, but for now, <clears throat> I have written it such a way that a subtrack is like a track. It goes from it, it goes from the ingress to the egress. So it's any it's any it's any composition of legs. So so the the track between A and B is not a subtrack because it's 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 not, what we say in the language is we place the packet on one subtrack. And what it really means is you place it on one and more legs between I and E. So, so just to be able to use this language easily, 
uh, right now the text uses subtrack as just any subset of the legs of the track. And that's because when you do row using this, you will not place the packet on all the legs in parallel because that would consume too much energy. You will select a subset of the legs and place the packet on that subset. So you will get redundancy, but you will not waste too much energy. So, so that's why the subtracks are any subsets, uh, so any set, which is a subset of the track. And the track itself is the set of legs. Okay, so the track is really the set L1, L2, L3, and the subtracks are any subset of that, but empty set, because you cannot write on the empty set. So it's just, I mean, the language that, that we used and the objects that we're constructing. So this is ripple, meaning that we are building a diodag between I and E. Uh, the diodag has root, which is I. It's actually reversible, giving you a diodag which root is E, by the way. And if the links are reversible, the diodag will be. If the links are not reversible because they are not really symmetrical, then uh, you use only in one direction. And the, the, the track, you can see globally from the external view as a tunnel between I and E. And effectively, if you follow RFC 9008, you'll find that the targets are external routes, external destinations for this diodag, just like Ripple and Nowhere Leaves, if you like. And so the, the encapsulation when you reach ingress will be exactly what 9008 tells you. So the ingress has to encapsulate towards the egress, which is the six cellar serving those external routes, those ripple and nowhere leaves. And then the egress decapsulates and, um, and, and, and delivers to a target. So this is, looking from a distance, this is a classical ripple geodag where the targets are external destinations. And the ingress is the route. And, and, and the row problem is if you, if you look at, if you consider the row working group, the row problem is to avoid completely flooding this graph, which would mean too much spectrum, too much energy. Um, when you want to reach from I to E, if you flood completely this graph, yes, you have the highest possible re uh, reliability, but you also consume a lot of energy and bandwidth spectrum. And since energy and spectrum are scarce, the row problem will be to select a subset of L1, L2, L3 for each packet. Um, I'm also summarizing uh, some rules of how all this work, works. So the track is set up by installing legs and segments, and the legs go from the ingress to egress, and the segments uh, basically fill the gap between the loose hops. So the segments are serial hops. The packet gets in a, a segment hop and gets out in the same fashion. There is no processing on it but forwarding. Um, non storing mode PDAO are used to signal the legs, so it's a source route path. Storing mode PDAO is used to signal a segment. It is a serial, there is no loose, it has to be completely up by up by up. Um, the fact that we have the segment, so we have the storing mode, that enables the non-storing to be loose. Actually, it's because we complete the gaps with the storing that we can have non-storing loose. And in particular, we can leverage that in the main diodag to enable non-storing mode ripple to have loose source route. So you basically can install segments in the main geodag so that your packets will have a shorter uh, source route header. And obviously the segments are also used inside the tracks uh, and, and then that allows you to, again, to specify your, your leg as a loose uh, sequence of hops. Um, there is this rule in the document, which we could discuss, but it seemed to be the most useful way of doing things. Uh, the track egress is implicitly a target when you do non-storing mode. Meaning that uh, basically, normally, you, the non-storing mode installs this quote-unquote leg, this tunnel between the ingress and the egress. Well, in your routing table, you will say that the egress is reachable by that. It makes kind of sense. Scott. And obviously all the targets Scott, are also... Two minutes to, left, please. Yeah? Okay. Um, okay, status of the draft and the other rules, you can read them. Uh, so we've published 24. 21 was a huge review by Taurus. I can never thank you enough, but we discussed at the ATF 112. Huge restructuration because Taurus really came from outside of the 
of the group. And so he, he asked for more restructuration to help the first time reader, etc. etc. So we did that, huge restructuration. And also, also, also good technical points. Then we had Michael's review. And then again, it went kind of deep. Uh, terminology, clarification, uh, also mapping to DeathNet, uh, which is the relay nodes are the, the hops, uh, the loose hops, and the forwarding nodes, that's DeathNet terminology, are the hops in the segments, one in, one out. Um, then we had 23 with Lee's review. And like I said, we had those three very deep reviews, very happy with them. And Lee, some of his, his questions were easy to answer. So kind of did it with version 23, but then there were four issues, if you remember, that we discussed at an interim, which were harder. So we, we discussed the four issues on the list and I published basically the result as 24. So my, my view is that 24 fixes all the, the GitHub issues. One of them was uh, how many targets you can have in, in a DAO. And uh, Lee wanted more than one, but how can the controller reach more than one? Maybe it can, maybe it cannot. Maybe the path that would reach them all is not as good. And there are policies in play and we did not want to enter that game. So what I said is okay to have multiple targets, but um, we, we guarantee only to reach the first one in order. And then the, the, the controller will do its best to reach also the others, but it really depends on what it can do. And then there were um, more uh, uh, discussion about the bidirectional flag in the SIO. There is a link between two siblings, directional or not, uh, which was introduced for Lee's review on 23, and, and the text was uh, improved on 24. Uh, since then, I have uh, done some rephrasing on legs and subtracts, which is uh, basically what we just discussed. Um, I've, I've yet to publish it. I could publish it now. So, so you can review that those changes. They are minor, but it's just to clarify the terminology so we can really speak about the objects. And we were waiting for Remus Harris review, which did not come. I mean, Remus has a lot of work, but I don't think it blocks work group last call because we had all those three reviews by Michael. Uh, tell us the end. So that was key. Since when work of Let's Go start, I mean, I would, I would hope people to uh, look in depth of if we want new status flows to be more specific on stuff. Uh, with our flows that they have in mind that we missed, in particular, error flows. There is, there is discussion on all this, but if, if people think we are missing, that would be good to know. And that's, that's it for me. Thank you. Comment questions? Okay, thank you very much, Pascal. We go to Michael. Okay, so let's see. Can now I you have control. Do I? Yeah. yeah. I pass you. I'm just, I'm just deciding if I'm going to stand up or do I have control? Uh, is it, oh. No. Yeah, I just passed you uh, again yes. the control. So then, oh, choose a slide deck. Yeah. Okay. I just the first time with my with the phone. You see, so there you go. Okay, so um, uh, this document has been. Uh, did we even get as far as working group last call and then we stopped again? I can't remember, but um, uh, back and forth, but that's the story so far. Let me see that worked. Here we go. Um, so um, uh, we got quite far. Uh, we merged in another document uh, with a different metric last year. Um, and we had a lot of discussions about this. And then uh, Conrad observed that uh, the, this new extension uh, interacts poorly with the trickle timer. And so then we had a lot of conversation back and forth and we settled on the proposal that the value would not change throughout the dodag. Um, and so the root would be able to set the value, the preference for that dodag, and it would, it would, uh, um, uh, there's a word for spread throughout the dodag that I forget. Um, it would propagate through the dodag, and that would be it. If the root wants to change it, it would need to, you know, increment the DTSM or something like that to, to uh, reset the trickle timer. Um, and so we kind of 
uh, reluctant. I was reluctant with that change, but I'm like, okay, I guess that's the right answer. Um, it, it, it's a compromise. Um, and Raul and said, well, actually that just doesn't satisfy his need for it all. Um, I think that we can solve it. I think that we agreed we could solve this problem by adding another lollipop counter to this extension. And that is essentially what I think that we're going to be doing. It just hasn't been done yet. Um, so that was the kind of things that we had discussion about. Um, I think that the new counter solves the problem. Um, I'm going to put that into the next revision of the document. Um, I don't feel I don't feel that confident about the whole thing until I've actually written some code about it, which is for me won't be very soon. So uh, I would really appreciate uh, some more deep review, particularly if you have running code. Um, I don't think that we'll finish the, 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 this, this needs some effort. And I think we've talked with the milestones sometime at the end of the year, this will be ready. And, uh, I said summer, uh, I think that's still feasible. Um, that's really it discussion. Um, if, if you, if you have questions about what it's going on, I have some other slides we can talk to, but we only have 15 minutes left. So I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. If, uh, if not. Any other questions from the group? Yes, Pascal in the queue. Go ahead, Pascal. Pardon? Yes, Pascal so is would... in the queue. Oh, go ahead, please. Yeah, I was one of the proponents of uh, fixing the minimum priority at the root because uh, I hope I demonstrated on the mailing list through a number of arguments that it just could not work the way it was specified because you, right. for one example, you would get different values from different parents and stuff like that. And also there was no policy to say how you would increment it. So the, the, the nodes could increment in any fashion and that was really, really weird. Uh, I, I think the, the, the lollipop is much needed, we want it. Uh, the reason why it's much needed is because you might receive uh, values which are older from some parents than others and you want to know which right. is the latest one. Uh, it doesn't really fix the problem that it does not balance the uh, DAG. Uh, but another argument was whatever was proposed there did not fix it either. And balancing the graph is a very difficult problem, and it won't be fixed uh, by just a value that gets incremented uh, down the DAG like this. It, it, it's, and if you look at it, it's a global problem, and it, it has to be... Well, I, I looked at it deeply. The only way I found to fix it is to look at it from the outside, from a controller perspective. Uh, it's 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 a very hard problem to balance something in the distributed fashion, basically. Take it so, as that. So, the, the, there's, so there's the thing that I care about, um, uh, it, which is a, a is a less pro a lower property or uh, than balancing the graph, which is that um, nodes don't try to enroll in parts of the graph, which have no capacity to support them so i i think that 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 it does oh. solve that problem right no what's so well uh, at the end the draft has but not not changing the priority down the dio uh, what prevents the node to join is the priority we put in the beacon right so the question is yes. how do you map the priority into the beacon um, yes. now so so it could be done. We we could work on how, basically, uh, someone could could tell that, and maybe we need another value to say something like that. Like the parent would say, "Below me, I don't want anybody" or something. Uh, but this this will this will take new work because, for instance, do you want nobody because of amount of traffic? Do you want and and in which case the solution could be slow down the traffic, or do you want nobody because you don't have uh, storing mode resources? Well, most of us are not doing storing mode. Um, or do you want to do it because you don't have enough non-storing mode resources? Well, non-storing mode resources are really to your children, not down the DODAC. So you don't need for that to to control what goes beyond you in the DODAC. You just need to control your own neighbor cache. And and for that, your beacon is enough. Your right? beacon, so you, you, can, you can manipulate your own beacon to protect your own neighbor cache. I agree with you. That's true. Yeah. And yeah. for the for the children of your sub -dag, it's not your concern, because that does not affect your resources. It just affects the throughput that you get through. And now the question if, of the throughput that you get through is yet another balancing, which is not necessarily related to the children. 
right? Some children can speak more than others, etc. So it's 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 a lot more complex than 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 what the draft seemed to intend. And and so let's keep the draft simple at what is doing well, which is non-storing. If you have an ever cash prime, fix your beacon. Okay. Um, and and if you have a throughput prime, like I said, it's probably a more global prime than this. And so, for now, so, it's flood control. So Pascal, you prefer the document as it is right now, where we've changed it so that you don't change the value from the root. Yes, don't need a new do, do do we still need a new lollipop counter? I think we do. My memory okay. of that is All right. uh is what Conrad said is probably that you may get different information from different, from different parents. But yeah. you want to make sure which one is the freshest. All right. So is is our four bits enough? I hope so, right? Yeah. So but if okay. if 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 we use the traditional uh Lollipop that we have in section seven of sixty-five fifty, yeah. uh, then we need a eight by eight bits, right? Uh, but do we want that, or just do we just want a, a, a rotation of? In which case, the rotation inside is is four bits. Well, so I think the question is: Are we going to steal some bits from some other part uh, of the extension, or are we going to add another byte? That's really the the two choices, right? Well, if you want to have a very simple specification. Uh, you should have one byte because then you can just say what we say everywhere else. Just look at section seven. All right. Well, that's so what I'll so propose. In, that's what I'll propose in 05 then. And um, uh, with that, I think I'm done. Are you any other other comments from other people? Okay. So I wonder how I turn it off. I don't know. I guess I'll let Inez do that. I did. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Michael. So basically, we will need a lollipop and then check section seven uh, for knowing how to do that. Some additional comments, questions? Okay. Have some implemented this? Okay. Some are willing to implement. Comments on this one? Okay, anyway, I think there are people that uh, was in the mailing list that is not uh, today participating. So I think we will receive more comments on this one, mainly because as well affects his teach work. Okay, thank you. Uh, Pascal, you should be next. Yes, so I guess it is. Uh, probably time to start working on this document in this group. Uh, so just to give you some, some context about what this is, and some of you have, have heard about it many times. <clears throat> so there are a series of, of RFCs which represent the adaptation of uh, IPv6 neighbor discovery, initially for the context of IoT, and now it has grown way beyond. Uh, there are, it's, it's used in, in Rift, it's used in uh, Ripple, it's used it's proposed in EVPN. So basically, what this series of uh, RFC do is is enable to register a node between a, a, an address between a host and a router, and uh, ask the router to to redistribute that address in the routing protocol of the day. That can be EVPN, that can be a Ripple, that can be whatever. The cool thing is that the signaling is completely abstract to the routing that takes place. So you can have any routing protocol above. Uh, it's still a simple registration with the same format exactly by the host. Well, I say exactly that there is a back field where you can still pass some hints to the specific routing protocol if you know to. But otherwise, it's, it's basically a routing agnostic uh, registration that we have. So this registration was initially for only addresses. But um, we are now, with this draft, we are proposing to, to extend it to any cast and multicast address. So for multicast, we already had a Ripple counterpart with uh, MOP3. Um, uh, yes. And um, that was pretty much a mix of storing mode and multicast. But we, we don't have anything for non-storing mode, which appears to be uh, the most important uh, 
case for the re actual repo deployments. So part of what this thing does is extend uh, 8505, as I said, for anycast and multicast, which, which the six low working group has been looking at. And so far, I mean, we had discussions and no objections, so we, I think we're pretty good there. And then we did the Ripple counterpart. In the one hand, is to extend uh, the Ripple and aware leaf draft, RFC now, <coughs> to inject anycast and multicast on top of uh, unicast, but also extend Ripple itself, because if the story, the, the Diodag is operating in non storing mode, we could effectively uh, leverage that as well for multicast using basically a, a distribution uh, set of, set of uh, tunnels using 8008, but across a collection of tunnels as opposed to just one. So basically, basically distributing across tunnel at the root, which is what we are proposing with this MOP5. So as you see out of those three points here, the last two are really a concern for raw as opposed to 6LOW. 6LOW uh, is pretty much done with 8505. We need to look at the extension to 9010 and to 6550. Um, so what happened to this draft? Uh, during ATF 112, we, we worked on uh, cleaning the, the, the description of the Anycast support and improving the, the backward compatibility uh, pretty much with uh, 9010. And also in the six low context, the EDAR, EDAC exchange had to carry the new flags that were introducing to say Anycast or Multicast. Since then, we we made uh, we bumped the version to from two to four. <clears throat> so we looked at uh, some concerns, some feedback we got from Wysan actually. So Wysan one one plans to use this work and are pressing us to deliver it. Um, one issue they had was with the whole node multicast link scope group uh, FFO two column column one, and uh, they did not want the nodes to have to register to it because in normal IPv six this is implicit. But there was no text saying yes or no, so we clarified that, yes, you don't need, you do not need to register to this. This is implicit. Um, then we improved the description of uh, how address protection works in that case, for multicast and, and any cast, because it's not obvious. And we also aligned the description with the work which is proposed at best to redistribute 8505 and now this new work, multicast and unicast as well, into BGP, into AVPN. Um, so the work for, for this group is uh, manifold, but mostly we have to look at MOP5. We managed the collision with uh, Ripple AODV, right, which is now four, so we, we, we have five. Um, but now we need to consider whether it's okay to do the ingress replication as proposed and uh, Basically, the draft also describes how you do, you select one of the possible destinations for any cast. And with this, I'm out of my time, so I won't describe much, unless you tell me I have more time. Yeah. So, so, so I, I skip on, on this slide, which gives you the, the, the most interesting aspect of, of the document and we'll take questions. Basically, my ask is for you, Alvaro, and um, uh, Eric Klein, actually. <clears throat> if you could work together on how we we do this document, because it, it it makes sense for me to keep it as one, because you specify both sides, and now you have a complete story. Um, sure, Alvaro, thank you, Ronnie. So I'm going to uh, delegate that to uh, our chairs, to go talk to the six low chairs and then figure out um, figure that out right whether we have two documents that depend on each other or one points or the other or whatever that is uh, or we work on one if we work on one we need to figure out who's going to last call it who owns the decision uh, etc but i think you know this is a working group uh, thing so uh, in essence dominique if you can please talk to the six low chairs that, that would be great i will give eric klein a heads up anyways so that you know we're all aware uh, and what's going on there. You have talked about all this in six law, right? Yes, and Eric was there. It was middle of the night for him. <laughs> so, so, but, but he was there. 
Good. And, and it's not the first time, right? So you're all aware. Now, as the ASG, is, as an ASG, even if you delegate, do you have a preference? Like, do you want to see two documents coming asynchronously? Um, you think that there is a risk that one document misses an aspect and then the other has to correct it? No, I don't have a preference. Um, no. Again, you know, this depends on what is going to go into each of the two documents and how much you know related they have to be, and whether they are two at the same time or two at different times. Uh, it depends on you know, the implementation and other statuses. So no, I don't have a preference on, on how you do it. Uh, uh, Alvaro, also in, in, in six low, if it was two documents, it wasn't clear, I think, to six low that that other document in six low actually fit their charter. So that was one of the actually arguments for, I think, for, for having it one document somewhere not in six low was that they weren't sure it fit there, even fit in six low. Uh, right. So again, you know, something that I think the, the chairs in that case about their charter with Eric need to figure out if it's in charter or not. Um, you know, we have all kinds of documents that span multiple working groups all the time. We do this in BEST and BGP and now even PIM and other working groups where, where that happens all the time and we just agree on how the document is going to be processed. Um, where it's, you know, usually last call in one place copy to the other one where we need to get consensus from both. Uh, but there's a set of chairs that, that are going to own this. So uh, yeah, the charter issue is, is an issue. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to Eric about that. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I'll, I'll keep you and us and, and Dominique in, in the loop on that. And, and please talk to the six low chairs about it. Sure. My, we'll hint, do. my hint is that the changes to six low are minor. We are basically adding some flags to say any cast or not cast. The big work is on the ripple side. Just like, you know, 910, 9910. <clears throat> so my hint is probably role is a better place, but that's just me. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we will discuss uh, with the six low chairs. Uh, we are running out of a minute. So we are going to send the conclusions in the mailing list and trigger the corresponding threads. Uh, Dominic, some other comments? Yep, I uh, will definitely work with the six little chairs and sort that out, no worries. Uh, there is a comment in the chat, Adnan Rashid. Uh, there is like, are node post protocols dependent uh, to each other. I mean, Ripple and Cisco Pan, Karsten replaced not. Okay, some additional comment questions. Uh, Michael, about your issue, uh, red issue in your slide, but we can take it to the mailing list because we are out of time. Uh, okay, uh, Adnan, do you want to say uh, lots of comments? Um, okay, I think we can conclude the meeting if there is no additional comment or questions. Okay, thank you very much all. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you very much, Bye -bye. Michael. Your help. Thank you very much. Big thanks, Mike. like we should have like a big button on the media code for the room that says we're really done now like it seems to figure out that we've left but i guess does that mean the chairs left <laughs>